Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern Trail Riding Adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. If you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. I have a robust lineup of Vintage Snowmobile Entertainment on tap for you tonight. But before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to make a comment. Uh, please nip, let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. Now, to our first-time viewers, if this is your first time stopping by to check us out, I hope you have a good time with us tonight. I also hope that you decide to join us here each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We simulcast to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube, so wherever you're viewing this, just circle back in one week's time, and we'll be right here waiting for you for another episode. To our regular viewers who are here week after week, year after year, season after season, you guys are the ones that make this possible, that you keep coming back uh, is what makes this podcast possible, and we thank you so very, very much for that. We have comments coming in. Let's take a quick look, and then we'll bring Rob on, and we'll get things started here. We've got Eric Berthiom says, awesome. Well, thank you, Eric. We appreciate that comment. Uh, compliment, David Lowry says, greetings from Alberta, Canada, getting 20 centimeters of snow tomorrow. Wonderful. Also in the comments, let us know if you're getting some snow. We're finally getting some snow here. Uh, and Rob, when Rob comes on, we're going to ask him how uh, he did with some snow. I know he was expecting some. Uh, Stacy and Art Fosler say, sounds good in Platte Kill, New York. Regular viewers, they've been here from pretty much the beginning, and we really appreciate that. Kevin Colhane says, loud and clear in Sudbury, Ontario. He's a regular viewer. David from Alaska Railroad says, sounds good, Mike. He's a regular viewer, regular and very loyal, and we appreciate that. We've got someone on Facebook saying hello from Minnesota, uh, saying uh, good job, buddy. We appreciate that. Eric is also saying a first-time viewer from Saratoga, New York. Welcome aboard. We love having you here. We really appreciate you checking us out. 
Dominic Anthony Kane says everything sounds good and looks good from Southeast Michigan. I'm going to take one more here and then we'll bring Rob on. Oh, we've got our good friend John Spranger Jr. from Elon, Wisconsin. He says the trails are open and he's been able to get in two days of riding. That is wonderful news. Cool deal. Oh, one more. Uh, our good friend Armin Buto, Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, says hello. Nice to see you. And um, yes, let me bring Rob on here and we'll continue with the uh, program. Um, Rob, hello, Mike. How are you doing tonight? Nice to see Good. you. Good. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. So the the question, the burning question that uh, we have for tonight is, uh, did you get some snow? I know last night we were talking and you were expecting some snow. How did that play out for you? We got her. Wonderful. We got her. We got about 10 to 12 inches of snow. And it took me two hours just to do a three, three uh, car driveway. Then the plow went by, so I had to go back out for another hour. Oh, to By do that the edge. It was getting wet and heavy. Oh, wow, yeah. crazy. Yeah, but it's it, our lakes just aren't safe yet. Yeah, the groomers road grooming, but they're turning around at the lakes. They're telling people don't go on the lakes. We had so yeah. much rain before, so when this snow came, it made the lakes slushy. So, yeah, I wouldn't trust the lakes over over here either in northern Vermont. No. There, I see ice fishermen out there, but I, I I'd be hesitant to take a snowmobile. I, I, I can see maybe walking out there if you test it. But I wouldn't dare take any kind of vehicle out there. Yeah, we had two people last week and go through the ice. Oh, locals! Okay. They knew sure. they knew the lake. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of them like to work that ragged edge and see what they can get away with. You know, they they really want to get out there and do some ice fishing, and I get that. But yeah. if, if you go through, man, it's, yeah. It's but we have some uh, railway lines, so the railway lines you really need, only need a couple inches of snow for the groomer to go up and down it. Hmm. But every 500 feet going down the railway line, there's somebody's driveway and there's a stop sign. So you got to stop and then you go another 500 feet, stop again. They're yeah. not my favorite place to go trail ride. But it's for this time of year to get the machine out to test it. That's a good place to go. Yeah. You're not going to wreck your suspension. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, cool. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got here tonight. We're on item number one. Uh, I've got a lot of clips tonight from the Crane Snowmobile Show, and the reason for that is uh, next weekend, February the 4th, in Lancaster, New Hampshire, at Crane's Snowmobile Museum, he's going to have, Paul Crane is going to have his annual snowmobile show. So I'm going to tease everyone with some clips from that show to try to encourage you, if you're in the area, this is a show very much worth attending. Uh, we're going to meet Bob Fabonio here. He's going to show us some of his rups. Uh, and you'll notice uh, in these clips at Crane's Snowmobile Museum, there's this big brown building behind the snowmobiles. Well, the nice thing about this show is you get all of the snowmobiles that the exhibitors have brought that are outside, but you go inside the museum, there's another 100 plus snowmobiles in there. So you're getting a, a, a hell of a lot of bang for your buck as far as a vintage snowmobile experience. Uh, so without further ado here, let us uh, let me cue this up. Cue up the video here and let's meet, uh, oh, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, Sorry, this is going to just take a moment here. I was clicking around just before we went on. I had everything queued up, and then I just unqueued everything. So this museum, is it one person that owns 150 snowbills in there? Or people lend them a machine, donate? Yeah, it's Paul Crane, and he owns most of them. There are a few in there that are on loan, but most of them are his personal collection. Uh, and there's, there's over 100 sleds in there. It's a 50 by 100 foot building, uh, and there's a beautiful collection in there, everything from antique sleds. He's got a... An old, I think it's a Model T with the twin tracks on the back and the skis on the front. Everything from real antique stuff to get into the, the late 50s, early 60s with the rear engine stuff. And then, of course, the mid 60s to the mid 80s with all the snowmobiles that we all know and love. Um, so he's got an impressive collection in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a wonderful show. 172 Main Street, Lancaster, New Hampshire. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, one, two, three. All right, I want you to take a look at it. Sure it you get two very nice sleds. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with Vintage Snowmobile Lovers. I do a lot of videos online. Oh, yeah, I think I talked to you before. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think last year, right? Yeah. Thanks for your time. Sure. I never arrived. Yeah, it was nice meeting you. Okay. We'll catch up with you. Yep. Yeah, just, you know, kind of my name is, and these are my sleds, and just talk them up like you're telling a friend about them. Okay. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> 
cold out. It sure is. So it's Bob, how do you spell your last name? Fibonic? Fibonio. Fibonio, okay. From Hudson, New Hampshire. Yeah, nice. So tell me when you're ready. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Hi, my name is Bob Fibonio. These are my two rups. They're Rupp Nitros. Uh, this one here is a 400. That I've owned uh, probably two years now. And I bought it. It was pretty much restored, but I kind of brought it to the next level. Put a new chrome bumper on and did some detailing. This is a 73 Nitro 440. Uh, this has also been restored. Uh, this one here is my more my more of a trail sled. This is more of a show sled. Okay. So, but I'm still working on this one, and I plan to. I have a chrome bumper. I'm gonna put on. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna also have the skis be chrome. And that should be about it for this sled. Nice. But they're fun sleds to drive. I. I've had these sleds when they were brand new back in 72 and 73, so it's kind of a fun thing for me. Nice. So you've had these since, since back in the day? Yes. Good. Oh, look at this. <laughs> now, did I, did I meet you at the Golf Town show? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you look familiar. Okay. I think you did. Cool deal. So what was that driving by, Mike? I think it was an old rear engine Polaris or a cat. It's um there's either two two people that could own that. It's probably from the Selly family. They're from Vermont and they have a very big collection of of uh, sleds that they've restored. There's also another gentleman and I'm drawing a blank on his name. He has more of some older sleds that have the patina on them. Um whereas the Sellys are, are restored sleds. That looked like it might have been more of a quote unquote patina sled. Yeah. So I think that it was the other gentleman's name, and I'm drawing a blank on his name, and I That's apologize. That's nice to but... see somebody bring something like that out, and it still runs. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and and it's neat too because um, the the snowmobile trail goes right through there. So we were looking at that that rear engine sled. The snowmobiles go right through there, and of course, they these are people on modern snowmobiles, and they're doing like double and triple takes at these older sleds, and <laughs> you know because they'll see a rear engine sled like that, and say, "What the heck?" You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool to see. Cool. So let's see. We're on item number two. It's time for some announcements. And uh, tonight, uh, the announcements are going to be on the topic of AMSOIL. So if you're ready, Rob, I'm going to put you full screen and give you a chance to tell us about some of the AMSOIL products that are available for both modern and vintage snowmobile enthusiasts. Okay, I'm ready. Cool deal. A lot of people know AMSOIL has a number of lot of products like our engine oils, gear loop, diesel oils and all that. But we're really big in snowmobiling. Uh, for all the newer machines, because the exhaust system and the revalves and all that, you need a no-ash oil. So that's why we have the interceptor. Bombardier wanted 92% no-ash. This is 99% no-ash. So this is mainly for the newer machines because of the ex revalves and all that. Keeps them perfectly clean. And AMS will give you a 5-6% increase in horsepower. Because the less friction, less drag. The less friction, less drag, longer engine life. So it's a cheaper product than the manufacturers oil but it outperforms them now for the older type machines since you don't need that no ash oil we do have just a regular snowmobile type oil it can be used in boats snowmobiles it's an injector oil it can also be used as a pre-mix and uh, it outperforms most of the petroleum oils on the market my lighting's not very good is it <laughs> no, a lot of right. people say oh i like the dominator where's your dominator oil i want to run dominator in my machine Dominators for the people that are going to go racing. Now, I run Dominator my trail machine because it does give you more horsepower. Cuts down nice. friction and drag, give you more performance. Engines do last longer. But if I get a rough, bumpy trail, I will follow a plug. So I carry extra plugs with me. And it does make a difference, more performance, more horsepower. But if, just for the average person trail riding, this is all you need. Yeah. Sure. So the yeah. Dominator likes the high revs. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Sure. So if you're on... Yeah, but one time I, I, had, I had four miles of moguls up and down. The trail hadn't been groomed. I didn't even get halfway through before I had to stop and change a plug. And at the end of it, I stopped and put the other plug back in. Wow. It, it will follow a plug because it's not 92% no ash what Bombardier calls for. Sure. Yeah. And we also have 
another product for a lot of people with uh, premix. I have a, a whole bunch of Jags at my cottage, and they're all supposed to be 32 to 1. They all run Amsoil at 100 to 1. The chainsaw we need, the 200 Black Max, everything runs Amsoil 100 to 1. So all our equipment at our cabin that is premix, one gas can has an Amsoil sticker on it, and that's all mixed at 100 to 1. So it's really handy because everything runs the same mixture. Now, Amsoil at 100 to 1 will give you more protection than what some of the other oils do at 32 to 1. Cuts down friction and drag, give you more horsepower and more performance, just like all of our other products, but it makes the equipment last longer. I go a lot to the drag races, and you see people in the wintertime, they're picking up the back end. They think their track's frozen in the, in the ice and the, when they first start the machine in the morning. Um, rubber track doesn't freeze in snow. Uh, but the gear case... ADW90 oil in the gear case, it turns to like honey. There, that's better. Yeah, by changing the gear oil in the snowmobile, and if you're out with your friends drag racing, you'll get one sled leg difference with Amsoil compared to the petroleum oils. And you should change the gear case every year because gear cases do run hot, extremely hot. And when they cool down, there's condensation in there. And condensation will turn into moisture, whether if it when it's sitting all summer long, causes rust problems and stuff like that. So every year before you put the machine away, you should change the gear case oil in it. And one of these bottles will do uh, average gear case nice. with reverse. Sure, nice. And the two cycle one we just sold, uh, Sabre, it comes in a perfect little bottle that one of these does five gallons of gas. Oh, so perfect, no pre-measured. Yeah, I can send my wife to the gas, gas station and she can't mess it up. One of these to one gallon, one five gallon pail of gas. It's perfect. Nice. When it used to be uh, 32 to one, 16 to one, and some of the machines were 50 to one, we had them all marked and they come back and the wrong oil be in the wrong can. This way, everything's so easy with the Amsoil products. Yeah, yeah. And a product I really like in the wintertime uh, is a coolant boost. A coolant boost was designed for stock cars because stock cars can't run antifreeze. They got to run straight, straight water. Water boils faster. By putting a coolant boost in, it disperses the heat from the water faster so the uh, stock car will run cooler. But also in your car in the wintertime, you get the heat out of the engine faster. And in the snowmobile, warm up time is half as long with something like this. So if you're going out and it's 10 below, your snowmobile will warm up a lot faster. And later in the year, if you're out running on the ice, you don't get much coolant when you're running ice. A lot of machines overheat. I had a friend that run a Yamaha, and his his slider would get so hot, the machine would stop. It would uh, seize up the track, and we'd have to get out and kick the sliders, try to get them loose. And the engine would be overheating. Once we started putting coolant boost in, the engine never overheated again. It made that much difference in the engine. Yeah. Wow. But it's mainly designed for stock cars, but it works perfect for uh, all the other applications. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, we forgot one right here. The people with uh, four strokes. Zero W40. Pours at 58 below zero. I'm not going to be out that cold to find out. <laughs> and uh, it's a 40 weight. So most oils after 225 starts breaking down. This is good over 400 degrees. Stronger film strength, more protection, gives you longer engine life, more performance. And longer drain intervals with it. Nice. Yeah. And most four-stroke snowmobiles aren't very easy to change. So if you can get oil and you can get a whole season out of it, it's a lot more convenient for you to change it during the summertime when the weather's nicer. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Now, if anybody's got any questions for us, we'd be a little love, I'd love to help answer them. Yes, please leave questions in the comments here. In fact, I'm going to check that right now. Uh, I don't see any related to... Oh, wait a second. Uh, okay, so Mark Gosso says, I used to have a 1948 Fraser rototiller that needed no ash oil. Wish I knew about Amsoil back then. I used to have to go to a small airport to buy ashless aircraft oil. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And we're then, talking about today, me out shoveling snow and all that. What a great product this is. It's Amsoil Heavy Duty Metal Protector. Now, I use it for undercoating my truck. Instead of going to a rust place, getting it sprayed, I like to use this. But if you put, spray it on your chute for your snow blower or your shovel, that wet, heavy snow doesn't stick. So when you go to toss that snow, it just falls right off. Nice. Is that good also in the spring when you're storing your snowmobile for the season to spray uh, various yes. parts of the snowmobile with that? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, it disperses the moisture. Uh, it's really good for rust inhibitors, and it, it it clings. I have some scratches on my truck, so this bare metal showing. So once a month, I spray that bare metal with this, and it hasn't got any worse. Keeps it protected. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So if people are curious about all these Amsoil products that they're seeing, you can find them on the Amsoil.com website. There's a link directly to it in the description. And if you decide to order something, we will both, Rob and I will both consider it a personal favor if you use my dealer number, which is in the description. Uh, I've, in the interest of full disclosure, I've signed up under Rob as an Amsoil dealer. So when you order through me, Rob and I both benefit and the, 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 um, uh, commissions that I make selling Amsoil go directly toward helping to offset the costs of doing these podcasts. So if you enjoy these podcasts, it's a wonderful way uh, to support what we're doing here. And uh, go ahead. And and if anybody signs call? up this this week, Mike, tell them to send you an email that they signed up, and we're going to send them. Let me put your full screen. Yeah, we're going to send them one of the Amsoil hats. Sweet. Yes, please do that. Yeah, send us an email. Send me an email. It That's in the description as well. To sign up. And for yeah. ten dollars, you save twenty five percent on the product. So if you're if you're a snowmobiler and you're going to buy a case of gallons, uh, four four of these ones in a box, you could save them almost fifty dollars. And and make over a hundred dollars, you ship right to your house free. Yeah, that's so impressive. It's a good savings. Yeah, it's, as, as you've mentioned to me before, it's almost like a Costco membership. It's $10, and that gives you the deepest possible discount you can get on your Amsoil products. And uh, in most cases, you're going to save more than the $10 on that first order. So it pays yeah. for itself in most cases right on the first order. You get up over $100, you get free shipping. It's, it's an and incredible there's value. there's no minimum, no maximum. If you just want a couple of bottles, you could order a couple of bottles. Um, you have a link. They can click and get one of the catalogs to tell you all the products we have available, compressor, hydraulic rotary diesel everything yeah there's links for the free free catalog in the description as well as for the preferred customer program and to check out their website oh and one last thing they've got a promotion running right now did you want to tell us about that yeah the promotion it say you're going to order some engine oils and diesel or something like that and you add two cases of amsoil two cycle two bottles of amsoil two cycle bottles to your order and use this promotion code cco one two three ats they're going to give you a free hat too. And we're going to send you a free hat also for signing up. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a, it's an amazing value, quality value. Uh, it's hard to beat the whole Amsoil experience. It really is. Uh, let's take a few quick comments and then we'll continue with the program here. Uh, where was I with that? Okay. So we've got uh, Doug Cower from Massachusetts, regular viewer. I've met him many times at the, at the shows. He hopes to see us there next weekend in Lancaster. So I'm looking forward to seeing you, Doug, and he's got some really nice Kawasaki's. Uh, Jeff Wessner, who was on here a couple of weeks ago, uh, more than a few weeks ago, uh, uh, yeah, I think December might have been, uh, he's saying the Wisconsin Dew Talk ride in Antigua, Wisconsin is next week, February the 3rd and 4th at the Holiday Inn. So if you're out in Wisconsin, that's worth checking out. Got someone on Facebook saying hello. We've got, uh, let's see, Stacy and Art Fosler saying they love the 72 Nitro 400. He used to have one and wishes he never got rid of it. Yeah, I can feel that. <laughs> and then we've got David from Alaska Railroad saying good evening to Rob. Hi, David. And then we've got, uh, here we go. Uh, after looking for four years for an R-Code Motoski Mini Snow, Paul Crane was kind enough to sell me his. Great guy. Absolutely. Oh. And, uh, yeah, nice. and I was talking to Paul just yesterday, and uh, he's the one that puts on Crane's snowmobile show, and he's confirmed. he confirmed with me yesterday that it's on. So looking forward to that. And it looks like there's going to be snow on the ground for it if, as long as the cold holds. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Someone on Facebook says, I run Dominator and everything two-stroke. Great stuff. Oh, yeah. and here's a question for Rob. Let's see. Um, uh, my old 72 Polaris Colt calls for 20 to 1. So do you think I'd be safe running Amsoil at 100 to 1? Yes. Amsoil 100 to 1 has more protection than your petroleum oil does at 20 to 1. Because it doesn't burn off to a higher temperature. It gives you more fill and more strength. And after he runs two or three tanks through, tell him to pull the plug out and take a look. You'll still see oil on the plug. Wow. Yeah. That's the test right there. Yeah. Amazing. Next weekend, I'm heading to Eagle River to watch Suprina try to keep her championship going. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, keep us posted on that. Yep. Absolutely. We want to hear the full report when you get back. <laughs> cool deal. So let's see. We're on item number three. Now, this is another uh, show. Uh, their second annual show is coming up 
February the 11th, Saturday, February 11th. That's why I picked that video, this video for tonight uh, to give you a peek at what this show looks like. It's in Newport Center, Vermont on Tatro Road. Uh, let me get this queued up here and we'll take a look. Um, here it is right here. All right, let's see. Take another look at this Kawasaki. I want to find that ski rule owner too. Yeah, yeah. this one here really works. The only thing that is original is the bottom of the clutch on it. Factory from the pipes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and we've got Ray Parento's rust over here. Here we go, he's starting it up. Let's have a time. Is that your ski roll over there? Nope, that's uh, a kid in the Yamaha jacket. Okay, cool. But yours is the, the Kawasaki then? Yeah. Do you feel like talking that up on Facebook? We're live now with 27 people watching. Don't know much to say about it. What you see is just the way I found it. All right. I do it. Sure. I just squirted gas in it. You mind if I put you on camera? Uh, I don't care. What you... Cool. Don't matter to me. Cool. Yeah, it's just I squirted gas in it and it started. And... <laughs> That's the way it came. Nice. What year is that ski roll? Uh, it's a yeah. Kawasaki. It's a 19 oh, Kawasaki. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm 1980. 1980 Kawasaki, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nice. Looks pretty good. Good. Yeah, what was your name? My name is Barney. Barney. Cool. Yep. Yeah, nice to meet you, Barney. Yep. I'm cool. Yep. Yeah. Good. What do we got going by? Here we go. Got a blizzard. Probably like a 79 or something, huh? Probably 78. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good turnout. Yeah, it's looking like it. Well, cool. Yeah, well, thank you, Barney. It was nice to meet you. All right. Great. Have a good day. Oh, I'm going to give you this for, for coming on camera with me. I've got a DVD for you if I can get one here. That's for you, sir. All right. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is Barney's Kawasaki over here, 1980. And I got it. They're cool as hell to look at. They're not a performance. It's just making it nice and quiet. How you doing, Mitch? So, only you, Mitch, would notice that. All vintage are just sleds like your type. Don't get it. Cool. So let's take a look at this blizzard over here. Oh, really? Wow, wow. So if you're just joining us, we're in Newport Center, Vermont. The Country Riders Snowmobile Club is putting on a vintage event. It's a vintage snow and they're gonna vintage show, I should say. And they're gonna have a ride later. There's a nine mile loop they're gonna go on. Got a lot of modern sleds here too, because we're right on the snowmobile trail, so we're catching a lot of people coming by. Here we go. Here comes the party. How's it going? That's bad, you? Good, you mind if I put you on camera? Sure. Cool. We're live on Facebook. Do you have slides here today? Or? I do. Nice. Uh, more, my wife considers it hers, but I brought it. Nice, this is your Manta. Wonderful. Yeah, 1985 Manta. Yeah. It's got a uh, 440 uh, liquid cooled cat engine. Yeah. It's kind of a mongrel. So yeah. Can clear skis, <laughs> John Deere uh, tachometer. Yeah, I saw her driving that around. It, it looks like it handles real nice. Yeah, it does. It's, it's real comfortable. Especially on the windy days. Yeah. Tucked You're tucked in, in a little yeah, out of the wind a little more than a normal sled? Yeah. 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 So, it's, um, yeah, it's got the uh, 440 liquid. And, uh, Were you able to open the hood? Or? Yeah. What was your name? Uh, Carrie. Carrie. Gavlak. Carrie uh, Gavlak? Yeah, it's Gavlak from Newark. Vermont. Nice. Yeah, nice to meet you. G-A-V-L-A-C? L-A-K. L-A-K, yeah. Nice. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, this is uh, one out of 150 they made in 1985. Wow, I'm gonna switch sides with you. We get better light from this side, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, if you can hold that up again, yeah. And of course, I'm casting a shadow on it. But yeah, continue so, your thought if you would, yeah. So 150 of the 440s yeah. and 200 of the 500 cc. So a total of 350 made yeah. in 1985. And nice. I, think, uh, I think they were out of business by 86. 86. And then uh, Bob Bracey started in 2000 with the trail roamer. Yeah. I think you need that a couple years and, and then those are out. Wow. Well, yeah, I appreciate you showing this to yeah, me. Absolutely. Yeah, when you fire that up, I'd like to get some drive bys. Okay. And sure. now I've got this Don't for you too for coming on camera. Oh, no problem. Uh, right here, that's for you. Okay. A copy of a podcast I do. Sure, thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. Yeah, well, nice meeting you, man. Nice meeting you. Cool deal. Yeah, let's get a look at the front of this Manta here. 
Yeah, that is really nice, man. That's cool. You feel like firing it up? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully it's still warmed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that hums. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, no kidding. It reminds me of those Honda Odyssey uh, ATVs. Yeah, yeah. Remember those? Yeah. Nice. That's cool. That is quite a rig with the steering wheel in there. Yep. They work. I don't even know what these do, but some of them work, some of them don't. Yeah, it's all factory with the uh, test gauge, so yeah. you can from Ain. It's on your gauge. That's amazing. Oh, you got a full start, too? Yeah, yeah, back up full start. Yeah. I just wish they had reverse. Oh, yeah, yeah. That would make life a little easier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you want to get a gas for it right there, just like in a car. Oh yeah, so I want to mention, this is a, another part of the Mongrel uh, feature. It's a Ford, Ford F-Series uh, pickup truck fuel door. Oh wow. And uh, oh, uh, these are actually Ford seatbelts. Ford seatbelts, yeah. yeah. Nice. And this acts as a roll bar, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. And supposedly they had a canopy. Yeah. Uh, sold by the dealer to cover this. That's what all the snaps are for. Oh yeah, yeah like a canvas cover or something. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Now, have you had to do much to it in a way of restoration, or is this no. pretty well original? No, it's all original. Uh, the, the wood got touched up. Yeah. It had, had some gel coat cracks in it. Yeah. But they don't. I could use another once over. You sure. Get the mask because this this is a little different color than the front. Oh yes, yeah. But yeah, a true survivor. Right enjoy it now. Yeah, the true survivor. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many survive, but interesting to know. Yeah, is that documented somewhere? Do you think? Or? I don't know. I just been reading online about how many were were made. Um, so I don't know how many are, are out there. Yeah. There's a website. I don't know if this guy would know. There's a guy out in Wisconsin, Greg Dauberke. He does the TwinTrackWorld.com website. Yes, I've been on there before. He might know. Because he's all about the Twin Tracks. I think he's got all three of them, too. The Raiders, the yeah. and the Roamer. Definitely, yeah. He's got a serious collection. He takes them to a lot of shows out there, does video. And... Have you ever been to the Top of the Lakes Museum? I've heard of it. I've talked to them on the phone, but I've never been there. Have you been? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. My wife and I rode there from Island Pond in 2017. On snowmobiles? Yeah, on snowmobiles. Took us a week. Get out. Yeah, 1,300 miles to Upper Peninsula and then... A couple hundred miles to Nobbin Way. Yeah. That was, was a good time. Nice. It was the museum the, the end of the, the trip, or did you yeah, continue past that? That was nice. Then you turned around and came back. Yep. And they, we actually pulled in that day. They had the big vintage uh, rally. So it was kind of special. Yeah. Uh, Cook out and everything. Very cool. That's cool. If you ever uh, get a chance to make it out that way, it's definitely put it on your, on your list. Yeah. I would like to check that out. Yeah. They seem like good people. It's Charlie, and I'm trying to remember his wife's name. Hey. Uh, I can't I think. Know, but they, they, put, they built an addition on there. Oh, they did. It's very, it's huge. A lot of stuff. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, that'd be Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's great to meet you. Likewise. Cool deal. There we go. Newport Center, Vermont. That was their first season doing that. Uh, and it was a really nice turnout. Some nice sleds showed up. Is your bucket list getting bigger and bigger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How'd you like that, that uh, twin track? Oh, I didn't know they used Ford parts, John Deere parts. Yeah, that's wild. They they must have just uh, shopped around parts, either looking for price or things that would fit what they were trying to do, and yeah, and work the sled around that. That's a good idea, actually. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, or as much anyway. Yep, yep. And now he can get parts real easy. Needs new seat belts, he goes to Ford Wrecking Yard. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. I wonder how he found out that. I guess somebody would have recognized. Oh, good question. Yeah. Maybe on that website, twin, twintrackworld.com, they may they have that have that kind of information on there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Greg Dauberke, who does that website, twintrackworld.com, is a friend of this this podcast. He's been on before, and he lets me use a lot of his videos on the podcast. I, I haven't in some time, but uh, he's been on here before, and great guy, great, refor great resource if you like Twin Track. Good. And, Good. Uh, before we switch subjects, I just want to just uh, put out there the reminder of that show we were just looking at. They're going to have the second annual show Saturday, February 11th in Newport Center, Vermont. It's right off Route 100 on Tatro Road. If you're curious about attending that, there's a link in the description to the Country Riders Facebook page where you can find all of the information you need on how to get there and when it starts and all of that. Um, so let's see. We've got some comments that have come in. 
Uh, here we go. Our good friend Josh Leverker says he uses Amsoil and everything he has. Great product. Cool deal. It's nice to hear that. Also, uh, Rob Liskey says thank you. He's the one that posed the question earlier about the 20 to 1 for his Colt. Uh, let's see. Those Kawasaki intruders were very fast for fan-cooled sleds, for sure. Uh, oh, here we go. The Kawasaki is actually a 79 intruder. Okay. And uh, David from Alaska Railroad says that 800 XCR sure got him fired up. Cool. And Kim Schaefer says, let's see some snow jets. I'm trying to think of some of the other videos I'm looking here on my cheat sheet. I don't know if we've got snow jets on this podcast tonight or not, but we often do. So do do a circle back on future podcasts, and I'll try to have something for you next week if, if we don't have anything this time. Uh, Dominic Anthony Kane says, I do the Nobbin Way show every year. It's awesome. Three days of fun and riding. Oh, here we go. Charlie's wife is Marilyn. Thank you so much. Cool deal. Now, James Springer, who is the brother of my good friend John Springer, uh, says he's got a question for Rob. He says, can I use OW40 in his UTV? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Cool deal. And it's nice to see all these questions coming in about Amsoil. Did you have more on that, Rob? Or? We, we do have other oils for ATVs. We have a 5W40 also. And we have a set, uh, 10W40 for the Hondas. Yes. Yeah. Good. But I, I run the 040 in all of mine. I have a Suzuki and Arctic Caps. So I run the same oil in both of them. Nice. Nice. Well, cool. Let's see. We're on item number four. We're going to go now to Goffstown, New Hampshire. They had a vintage show out there. I think it was in October of 2019. We're going to look at some Evinrude snowmobiles. And I think he had the gentleman we were talking to had a few other sleds in his collection as well. Let's take a look. Sure, yeah, yeah. 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 Just be over my shoulder. And... Sure. Yeah, just see yeah, what my name is. And... All right, my name is Grayson Merrill, and this is a 72 Johnson Rampage, 32 horsepower. Bought it in pieces and put it together. Next to it is a also 72 Johnson Rampage, but that is a 30 horsepower. It's a 399cc. Both, both of these are opposed motors. Uh, and next one in line is a 71 Bobcat SS, also opposed motor, 437cc, 32 horsepower. And all these have dual exhaust. And that one's been, been redone. Okay, yeah. Uh, the next one is a 70 opposed, 437cc, with a single exhaust, 25 horsepower. That was the first one I bought. That's your first one of your collection? Well, of the Evanroods, yeah. Of the Evanroods, yeah. 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 Nice. And the next one is uh, 71, 25 horsepower, 437, um, opposed motor. All those sleds that you just looked at have mutual lockouts on them. It's making fun of unique. Yeah. Very nice. Next is a 1967 sleigh for Evanrood. It's a one-year sleigh only, and the reason why it's a one-year sleigh only is because it's smooth all the way down. On the 68s and newer, they were uh, two different, it was a square part here, and it was two different sizes. So that's a one-year only sleigh. Wow. I've got the sled for it at home. I didn't bring it today. Nice. Next is a 71 Scorpion bubble nose. It is uh, got a twin cylinder CCW 340. And it's 71 was the last year of the bubble mills. That came from Michigan. Michigan. Cool. Next is a 1970 Scorpion Stinger. It's got a single cylinder sax, 368cc. And the metal flake is usually the hot one. This is a 71 Moto Ski, and that's got the most horsepower single cylinder in it. It's got a 194R motor in it. Makes 28 horsepower stock. Wow. J just acquired that this year, a couple weeks ago. Oh, wow. Good. Yeah, that's that's new. It's a nice shape, too, huh? Very nice shape. Somebody loved it. Yep, for sure. And last is a 71 Ski Roll. That's got a CCW 400 in it. And uh, acquired that a couple of years ago. 
just the way it sits. Right? Beautiful. Really to it, and that is also in pretty good shape. Yeah. Somebody left that one as well. That's nice. Oh, good. These are all riders. None of these are trail queens. Nice. Even, you know, they get redone, but they still get ridden. Good. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we're back. Was that all one's man's collection? Yes. <laughs> and they were in front of that really long trailer. He, he, yeah, I don't know how he squeezes them in there, but he got all those sleds in there. Yeah, quite and a collection he has. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I, I'm trying to think. I think he was from Massachusetts. He told me, but it's, it's that was back in 2019. So I, my memory's a little fuzzy. But uh, we do have some more comments coming in. Um, there was one that I think I missed. Oh, uh, where the heck is it? Here we go. Okay. My friend Andrew Strakos, who I met out in uh, Old Forge, New York over the summer, says he's got some pictures of a race in Saratoga Springs around 77 or 78, and he's going to send them to me tomorrow. Uh, this is Andrew Strakos from Granville, New York. Andrew, thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that. If you're going to email it to me, uh, rather than use the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page to email that that just gets I, I, I'm so behind on those emails and I because it gets so backed up. Uh, please send it to this address here at the bottom of the screen. Um, and anyone else who who wants to communicate with me, this is the best way to do it. The um, the email you see at the bottom of your screen. You're welcome to send them to the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page over Messenger. But I'm sad to say that it they, it gets so backed up with with messages, and I and I've just I can never stay on top of it. It's very frustrating. Um, and then there were a few other quick comments here. Um, oh, here we go. BCJ Vid says Amzoil is the best. Thank cool you. deal. Uh, Stacy and Art Fosler says, Does anyone know what CCW stands for? Uh, I'm trying to remember. If, I'm sure I've heard that over the years, but I can't think of it. Uh, here we go. David from Alaska Railroad says he really likes that ski rule. Oh, and by the any by the way, if anyone thinks knows what CCW is, here we go. It's coming in. Somebody read my mind. <coughs> Pardon me. Reese Fleury says good evening to Mike and Rob. And here's the answer to uh, CCW Canadian Curtis Wright. One, oh, here we go. It's coming flooding in. Everyone's here. We go. That is cool. We've got some knowledgeable people in the house tonight. This is wonderful. I should have known that because those machines were only built forty miles from my place. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I've got to say, I love that about doing these live podcasts and having a bunch of people watching is you can put a thought out there or an idea or a question and boom, uh, instant feedback. Uh, so that, that, that makes us an awful lot of fun. It's nice that people are watching and paying attention and engaging with us like that. Uh, it's just so much fun. So let's see. Item number five. Uh, we're going back now to Crane's snowmobile show uh, back in 2019. We're going to look at a Kawasaki LTD and a ski MX. Get that queued up here. And yeah, here it is right here. Let's take a look.
purchase of mine. It's uh, sort of a special race model uh, from Kawasaki. It's got uh, the four slash six is uh, special porting that wasn't done on other. Is that one with orders. the twin spark plugs on each cylinder? Twin spark plugs in each cylinder. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> nice. <coughs> On the big the liquid cooled, yeah. So you got the twin spark plugs here, and the porting, which I have on that uh, banner out front, yeah, uh, was very unusual. They're a very fast machine, and uh, they like to run. They're not a machine, as I found out last week in a vintage ride. Uh, they're not the machine to be run slower. Oh really? <laughs> on a trail, yeah. They they uh, run very hot. Sure. But uh, yeah, like most of the Kawasaki's, it's got the pop up headlight, and. Uh, it, uh, it goes pretty good. This one here, as you said a little earlier, uh, had the independent front suspension, and uh, it was kind of unusual for its day. They had a whole line of uh, lizard sleds back in the uh, early 80s, and the other ones were liquid-cooled. This one here is a fan-cooled uh, 497, and uh, it had that suspension, and it didn't sell well because it was heavy, and back then, even like today, they, they liked the light machines, and... Uh, Something with the liquid cools would uh, obviously make them go faster. But uh, this lasted for about five years, and then they uh, discontinued it. And this is what, 80, 81? What year That's is it? That's an 82. 82, yeah. And I rode both of these back-to-back, -back, and it was just an incredible difference in the ride quality of this one. Yeah, versus the independent this suspension. One. But you could feel the big difference in the weight. This you could feel the weight, huh? Yeah, this thing you could flick around. That thing, God, if you ever took that off trail, you'd sink like an anchor. <laughs> almost, almost like the modern day. Artic uh, the modern day uh, Yamahas, yes. as, as people like to joke. Known for being real heavy, yeah? Yeah, but uh, if you're looking for a nice, comfortable ride in, in rough terrain, then, then this is uh, the sled that you chose, because back then the grooming wasn't like it is now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you leave in the morning now when it's flat, and you come back and it's a little bumpy. Back then it was bumpy the whole time. Yeah. But uh, if you're in tight, twisty trails, that's more of a nimble sled that you would want versus something like that. Sure. What was your name? My name's Mark. Mark, great. Where are you based out of? Uh, Andover, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so that's from the uh, Crane Snowmobile Show, Lancaster, New Hampshire. Anything jump out at you there, Rob? Oh, I like that red Articat with the steering wheel in it and everything. Yes. But if you looked right behind it, there was a metal flake gold motor ski. I've only seen one before that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's, that's a really rare machine, that is. Yeah, for sure. That might belong to Jason Gibbs, but I, I could be wrong there. He he often brings moto skis to that show, and he's usually at that end. Yeah. Um, but I, I could be wrong there, too. It's There's just so many sleds. But, um, yeah, just a reminder to people, if you liked what you're looking at there, the Crane Snowmobile Show is next Saturday, February the 4th, Lancaster, New Hampshire, right there at Crane Snowmobile Museum. You get all, it's, you, you get, uh, uh, it's a double hit, if you will, in, the, in that you get all of those snowmobiles that you see outside that the exhibitors brought that day plus that building in the back that big brown building has over 100 sleds in there uh so you, so between the snowmobiles outside and inside uh you can't beat it it's it's one of the better shows in new england and it's uh, next saturday february the 4th i just spoke with paul crane on the phone yesterday and i have confirmation that it's on for sure so we've got a couple of quick comments coming in let's see we've got uh Oh, here we go. Reese Fleury says it was nice to meet you, Rob. It sounds like the two of you got together over the last weekend. Yes. Does he wonderful. have a busy shop? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Cool. I don't think he gets a day off at that place. Oh, wow. Good. That's a nice, nice problem to nice have. Nice town he lives in. Nice. Cool deal. All right. Well, let's take a look here. Item number six. We're going to Goffstown, New Hampshire back in 2019. Now, Alan Jebo is a guy that I see at most of these shows. He's He's got some... Uh, he, he's a cat guy, as am I, and he likes the cats from the late 60s to early 70s. And uh, the thing that uh, a lot of people are saying, and this isn't from him saying this, this is other exhibitors at the show, is he is a very difficult, he's the guy to beat uh, when it comes to sleds in this class. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. These sleds are just uh, exquisite. Let me uh, cue this up here and you'll see what I'm talking about. What do you think, Al? I try not to. <laughs> I try not to think, too. To start thinking you never stop. Yeah, I thought you start thinking way, way too deep on things. Yeah. Feel like talking them up? Sure. 
Cool. So I'll get up close to you for good audio, and then afterwards I'll go around and get some what they call B-roll footage. All right. Yeah, just my name is, and just uh, talk to My Alan Jibo. I come from Moncton, Vermont. Um, got a 268 Panthers and a 72 Panther. Nice day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can go wrong here? Now, you restored these yourself, right? I didn't paint. Okay. The woods, but, but all the prep the work stuff, and... Yeah. Nice. Assembly, disassembly, nice. so on and so forth. And are the 68s, are they identical, or what? Nope. Uh, this is uh, the P35. It's got the, okay. the 600 hertz with the jack shaft. That's a whole lot of engine, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> For 68, it was. Yeah. Well, these are in amazing shape. And Farrell did the seat um, and the tank bag. She did those. Oh, yes, yeah. Tool bag. She did those. Yeah, every does good work. She does. Can't beat it. She did the seats on both of them, you said? Both 68s? She, did, she didn't do that. She, she did that bottom on this one. Oh, she did. Okay. So this area with the snaps and stuff? Yep. Wow, these are really nice. Got the opposed earth in it. Oh, geez. You didn't see this on the Washington show. I didn't have it there. No. That is quite an engine. Now, how many horsepower on this? Or how uh, many cc? I don't know. It's 493. 493. Cc. I don't know what the horsepower is. Yeah. Is it pretty powerful? I don't know. I only drive it in the trailer. Uh. Sure. <laughs> One time it was too powerful. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wow. Yeah, I'll get some B-roll on these. These are beautiful sleds. Electric start on this one. Really? Yeah. Nice. I'll put that on there. This is the battery box. Electric start. Well, the battery's back here. Yep. Yeah. Good idea. This is 71? 72. 72. Yeah. I made some changes to it. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Um, had some chrome work done on it. Re-chrome there. Yeah. And under the hood, I had some, added some chrome here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put the crossover pipes on. Yeah. I'm going to change the belly pan to accommodate those pipes. That chrome really sets that engine off, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> that is something. That is really something. Looking from this side, too. Even that clutch is chrome, huh? Yep. That is a nice touch, i got to say. That's impressive. And your last name, uh, was it Jibo or Gibo? Jibo. Jibo, okay. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are really something. Thank you. God. 
trying to get him from as many angles as I can. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, Goff Town, New Hampshire. What did you think of that? Remember about three weeks ago or two weeks ago, we were talking about the Viking snowmobile? Yes. And one thing really neat about it was the gas tank came out and you took it out. Yes. Well, that third panther looked like the same kind of gas tank. Yes, you're right, that you little red the tank. Gas tank with the handle on top. You unhook yeah, the gas that is line, a great idea. The gas station, fill it up and come back, put it back in, hook the gas line up. Because yeah, yeah, one, a... one of the people on the show said, I, I think a couple of the manufacturers were doing that too. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's very convenient. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, and I agree. I hear so many exhibitors at shows say that, you know, he's a tough guy to beat if you've got sleds in that class. He's uh, just the attention to detail and yeah, just uh, it's really well done. <coughs> Pardon me. And we've got some comments come in that have come in. Uh, let's see. Kim Schaefer says, beautiful snow jets. Anyone have a 76 SST 440? For sale sure would like to have one cool deal i'll keep an ear out and if uh, if i hear of anything like that i'll uh, post it on here uh reese flurry says alan's a hell of a guy and a good friend i have to agree i've seen him at many shows and just a super nice guy to hang out with he and i have just about the same humor too so we can usually get each other laughing which is fun uh reese flurry says that 68 uh 600 was a one year only engine yeah that was uh -huh. a big engine under that hood uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, awesome cats. I'd like to own a 7,100 King Cat. Yeah. That's a piece. <laughs> so would everybody. Yes. Uh, those are so, yeah, those are unbelievable. Uh, Jeff Wesner says, big vintage meet at ERX in Minnesota. It's a Midwest ride-in, and it's a great show. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that information, Jeff. Appreciate that. Jeff was on here just a few weeks ago. Uh, cool. Let's see where we are here. We're just about done with the program. We've got two more quick videos to look at. We're on item number seven. Some more views from Crane's Snowmobile Museum. By the way, uh, if you like what you see, uh, the Crane Snowmobile Show is uh, February 4th, coming up uh, next weekend, Saturday, next Saturday in Lancaster, New Hampshire, at Crane Snowmobile Museum. Let's take a look. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. You like talking up that panther? A little later. All right. I got to come up with a There we go. Yes, and uh, now that you mentioned it, Rob, I did see that orange moto ski you were talking about. Pretty sure that's one of Jeff Gibbs' sleds, or uh, Jason Gibbs, because the rest of those sleds in that area were his, and so I'm pretty sure that's one of his. But any comments on what you saw there? Or? There were some good snow snowmobiles there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I have to admit, I, I push the crane snow, Crane's Snowmobile Show pretty hard because he's a good friend, and it's also one of my favorite shows. You, This show does not disappoint, for sure, so I, that's why I push it hard. Uh, here we go. We've got um, someone on Facebook is saying, my first sled was a 68 Panther. My ski do friends at the time would tell me that the front-mounted engine, aluminum chassis, and slide suspension were bad ideas on a snowmobile, LOL. Yeah, that'll never catch on, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool, yep. deal. cool deal. All right. So we've got one final video here, item number eight. 
Uh, this isn't the fire and ice ice drags in Newport, Vermont, back in 2019. Uh, it'll pretty much speak for itself. It's a great little video here. Let's take a look. <laughs> My name, my name yeah, is Steve yeah, yeah. Eckel. I'm uh, big, rolling uh, Vermont. We're having a good day today racing. I got my vintage 650 in the year. Some work like tours. We're going to have a, have a good day. Had, uh, nice. Looking for some more good days. Totally. Totally. Now, what can you tell me about this? This is a mod sled, right? It's a mod, yep. We got a uh, porting, polishing, deck the heads. The triple pipes. We board the board the carburetors from uh, 38s, 39.5s, uh, 250 picks in it. Wow! And uh, shave the track, and lighten it up. Nice. So we're ready to see what we can do today. Nice. What are you expecting for a time on that? What? Uh... We're not too sure yet. It'd be nice to. Uh, I like to hit 100 actually. Nice. 160 feet. But we don't. We don't. Sure. It's sure. All about fun. Sure. But yeah, I see those spikes on there. That's uh, 250 spikes on there. Huh? 250 spikes. That's yeah. amazing. That ought to hook up. You should hook up pretty good. Yep. Now the the holes drilled in there. That's yes. weight savings. Is yeah, that yeah, what's going on with that? Kind of did that. I don't know if it's gonna help much, but yeah, just to drill them out, lighten it up a little bit. Nice. Get a little different style, you know. Nice. Yep. Is this yep. your son? Yeah, that's my grandson. You want to have him, grandson, you want to come in the shot and yeah. introduce this, him? And... This is Alex, my grandson. How's it going, Alex? Good deal. Good. We're running an XLT here. Oh, really? Yep. We're we'll running that. It's got triple pipes on it from Startline Products, and uh, it's gonna be his first time running this one. We're gonna see how we do. Nice. Yeah, yep. this one, I was 120 yep. in that yeah, first tell place. Him, tell him, you're running 120. Yeah, tell me, tell me the story. 120 Yamaha, and we took first. Took first. Yeah. Congratulations. That was like what? Three years ago. Three years ago, at least. Yep. Three Outstanding. Years ago. And how old are you now? I'm nine. Nine. Good. So you were six years old uh, at the time. Yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine, six, six, right? Maybe, yeah, there. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Good. Do you want to get on the sled? We'll get a picture of you on it. I'll come around this side and. Here you go. Give me a wave. Nice. Sweet deal, man. Put him on ramps too, maybe. That. Yeah. Do you want to get on here? Oh, oh. You all right? Uh, yeah, I might have got that. That was on purpose. Yeah. That's for the camera. Yeah. Cool. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, good times on the ice. So what did the grandfather do? I don't remember. Um, yeah. I must have it if I went back, you know, to the original footage, but that was like four years ago. So. 73 is pretty fast for a nine-year-old. Holy yeah. smokes. <laughs> yeah, I was really impressed with that kid, you know, that he was doing as well as he, he was at six years old and then at nine. And, yeah. um, and to have him in, that involved in it that young, I, I have a feeling he's probably hooked for life, which is wonderful. Keeps him out of trouble. Yeah, and people like that, I think, are the future of this hobby. Yep. Yeah, that's really good to see. Uh, let's see here. We've got a comment that's come in. Uh, yes, someone says, another great show. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wind it down? Or? Great show, and I'll see if I can get some videos this weekend from the – not next weekend it is. It's the 4th, February 4th. I head up the Eco River. Yeah. The Pro Series is going to be there on the ice, racing ovals. So. Yeah, please try and get some footage if you can. I would love to see that. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, and we've got Jeff Wesner saying, thank, a great show. Thank you for all the info. Uh, also, for David from Alaska Railroad is saying great show as well. Yeah, thank you so much for the compliments, everyone. Uh, cool deal. So with that, we're going to wind it down. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you to Rob for coming on tonight. Really appreciate it. Always a good time. And uh, we plan to be here in one week's time. Wherever you're viewing this tonight, circle back in one week's time. and We'll be here waiting for you. Great show, Mike. Uh, Thank you so much. As always, last word goes to Amsoil. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about 
AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warrantied for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gum, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, AMSOIL says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the AMSOIL bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the AMSOIL. AMSOIL's flash point is 425 degrees and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yep. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out. And once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSOIL is an all season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSOIL than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSOIL is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, what's the benefit of the small engine? Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSOIL has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSOIL will ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engines, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there. You see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click join now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop up goes away, you'll be back on the main page and the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says shop. Now you can start shopping for products and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over hundred dollars. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities, but take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying, paying $12.49 for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. 
and then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far. <coughs> Pardon me. And then uh, you just click view cart in the upper right, and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next 6 to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of this signature series. But that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. $34 and if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-55594. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is... Uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yes. yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products to cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business, and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with Amsoil. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. Like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows car shows motorcycle shows snowmobile shows anything with a motor you like going to those shows those events those races this is a great way to turn that into a a, a, a income opportunity for you yes yes and just by wearing my amzo hat at one of these events people come up and ask me about amzo people, people don't know where to buy it and i'm there to help them show them where they can buy the products perfect perfect well cool cool well this is great uh, any final thoughts rob before we wrap it up Amzo is a fun business. Amzo has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have a okay. great day. You have a good day.